Hello friends, we are going to discuss about e-resource management. In the process of e-resource management, we are going to discuss about the acquisition process in this video. As we all know that nowadays e-resource is considered as an important resource in every libraries due to its simple nature you can say and also easy retrieval and access over internet or on intranet so we are going to discuss about how the e-resources are procured in any library and what are the main points we need to take care before we subscribe these resources. So let's start now. Before we go into detail, we are going to talk about these things. In this video, e-resource and its different types, why we need it and what is the role of budget, discovery, trial access, evaluation, selection, authenticity, price negotiation, license agreement and final and at last ordering and payment. So, let us start one by one and discuss in detail. When we talk about e-resource, the first thing comes in mind that what is e-resource? It can be defined as a material that requires an electronic device to be assessed whether through a personal computer or mainframe computer or handheld mobile device. These resources may be accessed via internet or over intranet and there are different types of e-resources such as e-journals. These are very famous nowadays ebooks full text databases which contains the full text detail indexing and abstracting databases reference databases numeric and statistical databases e audio visual resources so we are going to discuss in detail that how these resources can be procured in any library. The first thing, there is a life cycle of e-resources which has five major components and through this image one can understand. So, the five major components are acquisition, access, administration, support and evaluation monitor. So, in this video we are going to discuss only the acquisition part and remaining four we will be discussing in the next videos. When we talk about the e-resource acquisition, the first three question immediately appears in mind that why to subscribe this, whether what is the need, whether there is a need of this resource, why to subscribe, then what to subscribe, I mean to say that what is the name of that resource which we are going to subscribe for the library. And the third one is the how to subscribe. 
it means we are talking about the methodology through which the resource has to be subscribed and these three relate to the part of collection development when we talk about why this collection it means it relates to the philosophy when we talk about what the collection will be it relates to policy it means what is the policy of library and when we talk about how then we are talking about the set of procedure for selection of resources it means who does what and when and how so the basic three things we have to meet then only we can come to conclusion that why we are going to subscribe the particular resource what we are going to subscribe and how we are going to subscribe the first thing in order as i mentioned in the overview when the resource is recommended for purchase the first step is to assess need of particular item in the library and the budget of the library what happens if the user or the authorized user who is eligible to recommend any document for subscription or purchase in the library when any resource is recommended and when it comes to library the first thing as we discussed in the previous video that is the need of that particular item or resource in the library there we ensure the duplicacy at our in whether the item is already available or not if the item is not available and recommended by the faculty member or the authorized user who has the eligibility to recommend the resource enables us to take decision yes there is a need of this item then we check the budget of the library because we do not only deal with one item in the library we deal with many resources and there also we spend huge amount or the budget to purchase or subscribe so against the recommended item we ensure that there is a sufficient budget in order to procure that item the next part is that when we come to conclusion yes that is the need is satisfied yes this item is required in the library and uh, you have sufficient budget so we start the process of acquisition and in order to process or you can say in the in process the first step what we follow is the discovery it means we identify we start identifying the resources and how do we identify or how do we discover the resources some of the points are mentioned in this uh, video which i am going to explain one by one the first one is that recommendation of faculty member research staff and also librarian or you can say any authorized recommender or the authorized faculty or whoever is whoever has the ability means eligibility to recommend the document so once the document is recommended the library staff or the librarian is starts identification identify that resource through different sources and sometimes what happens that suppose we identify some time about the resources through trial offer which is initiated by publisher for limited period of time in particular institute or organization sometimes the publisher or vendor that demonstrate the product in different institutes so we come to know that this particular resource is available and it also satisfies our domain area that this domain area has this resources we also 
come to know about that resource through user recommendation, some of the discussion list, peer library website, we come across many websites which has the sufficient information about the resource. We come to know, we try to get the detail from publisher's catalog, from other library of similar nature. Suppose we are working in Central University or IIT or NIT, we come, we try to connect with some other institutes of similar nature and come to know about that resource and also sometimes institute or university suggestions. So we meet the ID identification or we discover the resource through different methods. Once we finish the discovery, the identification of e-resource, the next very important part is that the trial access. After identification of resource, it is highly advisable for the library professional or whoever is responsible for procurement of e-resource must go for the trial access before final subscription and the benefit of trial access is that it provides an opportunity to librarian and also to the member of the selection committee to evaluate about the content of e-resource in terms of functionality, technical issues, consistency, uniformity and getting feedback from the users who have used that particular resource. And uh, nowadays almost every publisher or every content providers, they offer trial access to every organization, whoever is interested to subscribe the e-resource. So it is highly advisable to go for the trial access before the final subscription. It will give clear cut view and uh, an idea about the content and different other important aspects. The next that is important in order to subscribe the e-resource once you finish the trial access is the evaluation. There are different criteria for evaluation which are mentioned here. The first one is the content, then updates, quality, indexing of the e-resource which enables the retrieval of the document authority, accessibility, cost, technical support, and license agreement. We are going to discuss one by one in detail here. The content, the content of e-resource is very, very important in the process of evaluation because content decides the subscription of any e-resource for whom you are going to subscribe, whether the content is suitable for that particular domain or that particular faculty or user. So library professional has to ensure first whether the content is full text or availability of retrospective material bibliographic citations, contents abstract, contents annotation, contents graphic and whether the content is appropriate as per the curriculum and research work in, of the institute. A library professional has to evaluate or the committee has to evaluate the content part. When the content part is over, the selection committee or the library professional has to see about the update, how often the content is updated, what is the frequency of updates, 
whether the content is embargoed it means is there any restriction in order to retrieve or access that particular resource whether that particular content is available on archive I mean to say that archive availability then a library professional has to ensure about the quality which involves the content quality reputation of publisher then intellectual level of content there may be a case of content which is not relevant to the need of user in that case the resource which is going to be subscribed will not have any value for the users or will not have any impact on the research because it does not have the intellectual level of content so a professional or the selection committee has to ensure the intellectual level of content in order to subscribe the resource quality of information offered in the resource a very very important point because if you are going to invest some huge amount you have to make sure that the content is suitable to the need of user the next point is very important which enables or ensures the retrieval of the document and that is the indexing while evaluating the resource the indexing part has to be ensured because indexing of the document ensures the access of document with accuracy so it has to be checked that content is well indexed and also has the good frequency next is the accessibility it has to be ensured the accessibility of the product to the users with ease when the users start accessing the document they should not have any problem the interface should be in such a way which can be customized it has to be very stable and there should be provision to download the content there should be provision to print the document there should be provision also to email the related content and most important is that there should be facility to search the document with the help of boolean operators which will allow to restrict the retrieval of unwanted content from the database and there should be provision to specify the field so the accessibility is very important while evaluating the resource by the library professional or the selection committee the next in evaluation is the cost the cost is the major important factor for any library in order to subscribe the resource because nowadays the e resources are very very costly so a library has to ensure that the cost which is going to be utilized has a value for the research or academic need sometimes it is very confusing in case of e resource the cost of e resource such as e books e journals etc it varies according to the number of simultaneous users ports id password remote access the different e resource have different the terms and condition in order to access so based on that the price also the cost also vary and the pricing plan is not standard between vendors but can be standardized with the help of various consortiums here the role of consortium is very very important especially some of the cons consortium 
which are functional they take care of the cost negotiation price negotiation on behalf of the organizations institutions and the institutions who are part of who are the member of these consortiums they get benefit because the consortium they negotiate the prices and based on that negotiation the institution or organization can subscribe and also can be an effective uh, method to reduce or save the amount publisher or content providers may play important role in fixing the deal with best price for consortium members and prices may vary based on material budget authentication of users simultaneous use and remote access of users so as i already mentioned that it depends on the situation if there are more number of users if there is a single user id password demand so it may vary from when uh, content providers uh, one content provider to another so it has to be evaluated well the next point is that is very important that is the technical support it should be considered as a very very important aspect while evaluating any resource the technical support may include the training program for the staff and users whenever you are subscribing any document from any resource from the publisher or vendor it has to be supported technically because the user or staff may not be aware about the technical difficulties in order to access the resources so the publisher has to ensure that the document or e resource being provided by the publisher is supported by the technical difficulty or technical help there should also be a provision to have the online help and manual which can save lot of time of the user and staff and also help the staff to get the technical support through these manuals help pages of the product for the users sometimes the users when they are accessing the document they get difficulty so these help pages may help them to retrieve the document with ease and there should be compat compatibility of hardware and software in order to access the e resources so the next point that is the license agreement we will be talking about license agreement in detail but generally the license agreement is not the job of selection committee but the committee or the selector must take care of the following while evaluating the resource before final subscription they should take care of the if there is any restriction is there any issue of access to archival archived information definition of authorized users who are going to use and who will be authorized to use the e resource what will be the policy to use for distance education or what will be the terms and condition for use of for distance education what would be the terms and condition to access the resources offline or off campus and how frequently or whether there is a availability of user statistics statistics or not so selection committee or library staff has to ensure all these points one by one and in detail before going for the final subscription once it is over then the committee or the library professional can in means uh, go ahead for the final subscription but before that the all the points mentioned for evaluation of e resource for selection committee for final decision 
which commensurate with the increasing in cost and decreasing in budget of the library. The, the, the decision should be careful and conscious for each resource to meet the institute vision. The next, once evaluation is over, the next important is the authenticity. It means the bibliographic information of e-resources finally decided by selection committee for procurement of product after evaluation the next important is verify bibliographic information and uh, it includes the following points the what will be the coverage of the product or e resource how it is going to meet the content what will be the content coverage who is going to be the main target audience of that particular resource for example if you are going to subscribe any e-resource for management so you have to ensure that the in management who are going to be the main user for that e-resource who is the content provider whether the content provider has any uh, means uh, you can say you you can take feedback from other institute frequency of update how frequently the resources are updated and the cost of product uh, obviously it is very important point so the bibliographic information of e-resource has to be authentic and the selection committee after evaluation has to take care of this the next point that is very important and that is price negotiation we have already discussed in evaluation so what are the things to be taken care while negotiating the price as we have already discussed that there is a lack of a standard pricing model of e resource for negotiation the price of product may also vary from product to product and with different price model and the price models should decide the best to meet the users need and some of the pricing model which are mentioned here but not limited to this they, they may uh, these may have the different in different um, products the first one is the product type which includes aggregator database full text database means you have to ensure while negotiating the price about the type of product whether it is full text or the database aggregator database product available through yearly subscription or it is one time purchase or it is multi layer deal with fixed price cap so one has to ensure the product availability whether what what is the subscription yearly subscription or it is one time purchase the rental model whether it is rental model or not print plus online is the price same for both or suppose you are going to take the print are you going to get the complementary access of online of the same or are you going to pay some extra amount if you are going to access the online resource of the same so all these has to be checked before going for the final subscription and that comes under the price negotiation the institute size institution size the charge more than more when selling to large institute with multiple departments or location or size compared to a small institution sometimes it happens that when the uh, a small institution they are going to buy the same resource they may get less price quote or compared to the large organization or institutions where the number of users are more so it depends on the size of the institution number of users how many students total number of students staff faculty the unlimited access including remote access the price negotiated by consortia as we already discussed during the evaluation that some of the consortium they take enough care in order to negotiate the price on behalf of the member institutions and the negotiated price is taken care by the member institution to subscribe these resources price for package deal sometimes what happens that we have to take care of the package deal bundle 
which includes the bundle set of titles and electronic journal package price for pick and choose sometimes what happens that we don't require the full package and we need only 10 journals but if you go for bundle it may have more than 1000 journals but we you don't require all of them so in that case you can go for price i mean pick and choose model but the it has to be ensured that what will be the price for pick and choose model the price for content access if you are going for full text article or abstract or indexing database so the price negotiation is a very very important part in order to subscribe the resource now the next one is negotiating license agreement when the license agreement is taken care it has to be taken care of very very seriously because it's a very crucial part in acquisition of e resource and uh, it must be reviewed and negotiated after selection and before purchase because it contains various clauses terms that define the right of the library libraries users and also publishers or content providers so what will be the first which is to be taken care that is the authorized users on sites who are going to use so authorized users may include staff students faculty research scholars and when we talk about the authorized site which may include name of site premises that should be authorized access to the product authorized users can access the licensed resources from particular building or campus or offices or from remote location through ip authenticated uh, protocol system use of proxy server or through remote access or through user id and password so while negotiating the license agreement it has to be taken care very very seriously because it permit the multiple users can access uh, means uh, the resource which is going to be subscribed whether it permits the multiple users can access the e resource simultaneously at the same time in different geographical locations or not so the authorized users on site the terms condition for this has to be taken care very seriously the next in negotiating license agreement is the archiving policy and perpetual access the publisher should mention the archiving and perpetual access policy for the e resources means the perpetual access allow allows that after termination of the agreement also library will be able to retain the accessibility of the e resource for which payment has already been made so the perpetual access has to be ensured while negotiating the license agreement or has to ensure whether uh, about the archiving policy in negotiating license agreement the next one is the institutional and self archiving whether there is a clause for author for uploading their publication to institutional repositories in pre print or post print format or not this is also very very important the next point in license agreement is the copyright and fair use this clause allows users to view download or print some other services such as permission of interlib whether you can share the document to other institutions or not so it has to be clearly mentioned in the license agreement what is permitted and what is not permitted so if it is permitted to what extent it is permitted to view or download or copying printing all these has to be taken care in the license agreement and if it is not permitted so what is not permitted it has to be taken care very seriously and it has to be mentioned like use of robots or intelligent agent to do systematic bulk or automatic downloading is not permitted so likewise so many points systematic downloading using e resource for commercial gain transmitting disseminating or otherwise making online content available to unauthorized users posting the publisher version of pdf from an article to an open class website all these points are not permitted 
and an institution who is going to subscribe this resource has to take care very very seriously otherwise it will create a lot of problem in order to negotiate license agreement the next point is the uses and statistics the content providers should agree to provide usage statistics for resources used by library users and there should be provision to get the monthly yearly usage and statistics of the e-resource because it's a, it's a very helpful document or the information to decide the procurement of the same content next year or for some other purpose also so it has to be taken care while negotiating the license agreement the next one is the privacy and confidentiality this clause requires privacy and confidentiality of the users accessing information of e resources the information access through their created personal account many resources are there where we are supposed to create the account so if i access any document my privacy should be very very confidential and it should not be disclosed to other users or other people that who has access the document now the cost while signing the agreement ensure to have cost of the e resource mentioned in the agreement it is very important the agreement must have the cost mentioned in the agreement and the technical consideration it should be mentioned in the license agreement very clearly the content provider should address some technical considerations we should notify the content of e resource are available via link resolver open url or link server content offered by the content provider should be consistent metadata of the e resource should be provided for the integration in library online public access catalog discovery tool or if you are using any federated search so there should be provision to download the the file in different format international format and there should be provision to save this so that it can be saved it can be saved and uh, it can be imported in the library opac the contact information of content providers should be mentioned for technical and customer support e resource should also be accessible by various web browsers the compatibility of web browser is very important because sometimes suppose the web website is written in java and uh, if you are using the uh, any browser which does not support the java or it has some problem so in that case it will create problem so online help screens or online users document manuals should be provided and during license period there should be guarantee of more than 99 percent of time to e-resources or any interruption suppose sometimes it is not accessible so there should be provision to deduct the license fee or extend the license period commensurable to the amount of downtime e resource should be provided with digital object identifier for a stable link to the information in the resources so these points should be taken care very very carefully and term of payment and termination payment liability should be started from the date of access of the license e resource termination includes region and time of termination and notification from the provider so the payment for means the payment and termination the accessibility of the e resource so the start from the date of access means after the payment and uh, termination includes it should have the clear region for termination what time it is terminated and also notification from the provider the next point is the governing law this is very important in case of e-resource subscription which is related to dispute if there is any dispute between the content provider and the the institute so where where it is going to be settled 
so it should be settled in the geographical location of the institution suppose you are sitting here and uh, if any dispute arises and you have to go to a place where you cannot reach easily so that will uh, means uh, create lot of problem for both so it has to be taken care once the license agreement is over so the last is the order and payment and which includes you need to communicate with the content provider about the e resource that is being signed and provide ip address ask for user id and password content provider has to provide a stable informed resource locator for the product through which the resource can be accessed the content provider has to give you a stable link which should not be dynamic it should be stable verify access of the product and inform the department of the availability of the new resource once the order has been placed and you are ready for i mean after making the payment the one has to verify the access whether the document or e source is accessible or not accordingly inform the related departments about the availability of new resource and notify various departments to include the e resource in online public access catalog or their blog or discovery or library portal schedule different training program on use of e resource to the users after access is confirmed the provider sends an invoice for payment and once you receive the invoice you have to verify the invoice review it make sure that whatever the charges as per the agreement is mentioned in the invoice and then finally process for the payment by as per the institute rule you can say through different payment method so in this way a e resource can be procured the other part like access and other important aspect we will discuss discuss in the next video so thanks for watching this video i hope i have been able to make you understand the concept of e resource the different types of e resource and what are the points to be taken care in order to subscribe the e resource so if you have any query or question you may drop a mail to mentioned email id here and also you can reach any time on the given number so thanks for watching this video stay updated with librarian guide thank you very much